Hi, everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and get started today. Um, I don't have any real announcements or reminders. There is, a, I guess, an assignment currently ongoing. It's uh, user sign up still, I think. We haven't finished that one yet. And it's due on Monday, if I'm remembering properly. So uh, you still got some time to get that sorted out. Um, as you've probably noticed, we've been taking a break from our FlickList application this week. Uh, it's going to come back next week once we get done talking about databases. So we'll hop back into FlickList next week and start working in some of this database stuff uh, starting next week. Um, but yeah, today uh, I actually is kind of a low-key day. I don't know if that's because there's not a lot for us to talk about or if it just feels like there's not a lot for us to talk about compared to Monday. Uh, when there was a whole heck of a lot of stuff for us to talk about. I'm not sure. Um, but either way, uh, it's there was not a huge amount of information introduced today. At least I, I didn't feel like uh, today had a huge chunk of new stuff. But there is a few new concepts to talk about. And then you know the other major piece of today, maybe the biggest piece, was getting a database installed on your machine and set up so that we can actually start playing around with some actual SQL code. So we're going to spend some time doing that today, uh, a little bit later, uh, but let's just review uh, some of the few new concepts that were introduced. Um, what are some examples of some constraints? This was part of the W3 schools, I believe, uh, prep work for today. What are some examples of some constraints that you might expect to see used on a database? Not null. Not null, okay. So we actually saw that one a little bit last time, right? Uh, marking a column, whether it, we're, uh, we're allowing it to be null or not. What are some other examples of constraints? Primary keys and foreign keys. So we've seen those pop up as well when we were creating tables for our database, right? Any others? Unique, good. Um, so unique and primary key are not the same, right? It's a common source of confusion. Primary keys are unique, but just because a column is marked as unique does not mean it is the primary key, right? I can have columns that are marked as unique that are not the primary key. It just means that I'm not going to allow duplicate values to appear in that particular column. And I don't intend it to, you, to use it as part of a relationship. Uh, any other constraints that I'm not remembering? Check. All right, so what's check? That's a very broad category, right? Check is basically choose your own constraints, right? It lets you make up your own your own constraints. So what's an example of when we might want to use a check constraint? Can somebody think of one? Yeah. An, yeah, an age value. So I want to verify that somebody doesn't give me a negative age or you know something like that. Sure. Any other good examples you can think of? So, length? Of characters. Um, so if we're worried about max length, we already kind of have a way of doing that. But if we want to enforce a minimum length, we could use check to do that for sure. Yeah. Um, any others you can think of? It kind of feels like something we talked about recently, right? The check constraints in particular. But the other ones too all contribute to this idea of what's the word that we use to make sure our data conforms to a particular. Talked about it a couple weeks back. Rhymes with the uh, salidation. I don't know. Validation. Yeah. They're all just different ways of validating that our data is going to fit the form that we expect it to, to take, right? This is a little bit of a different form of validation compared to what we saw uh, a couple weeks back. The validation we were doing a couple weeks back was on the client side primarily. So a user types a value into the box, and we're going to check to see that that value in the box actually is a valid value, right? Meets the criteria that we're looking for. This is more on the server side. Oh, here's a request to insert some data into the database. Let's do some validation on that data before we put it in the database so that I'm not filling my database up with a bunch of garbage, a bunch of bad data. Um, both are important. Both are very important. Um, and, and it's, you know, just because you want your users to funnel their data into your application in a particular way doesn't mean that they will. They'll find ways around it. And so it's still important to validate things on the database side um, in case you do get additional data coming in 
that doesn't pass the client-side validation checks, um, that doesn't actually go through the client-side validation checks. Cool. Uh, what is a view? Yeah, go ahead. A snapshot. I like that. I like that word snapshot in use with a view. Yeah. Um, can we compare it to a table? How is a view like or unlike a table? Does anybody have any ideas about that one? So it behaves like a table in some ways. I can query a view just like it was a table. But unlike a table, a view does not actually contain any data. The name view actually kind of tells you what it is. It's like a window into your tables, right? So a view is not a table. A view is not storing any information. It's simply providing a different perspective into the information that you already have. So when do we use views? Did, it, did the prep work go into use cases for these very much? There's one classic situation where we use views, and it's Got a lot to do with security reasons. I can write a view that obscures any sensitive information so that somebody who maybe doesn't have the proper security to access the private parts of the database can still use the non-private parts of the database and I don't have to worry about them seeing the, the sensitive pieces of data. I'll make a view that obscures the other stuff. Um, that's a classic application, yeah. That's a good question. So you can, uh, and that's actually an option that you can often set. So the question was, does a view provide writable access to the database? And the answer is maybe. It depends on how the view is created. Some views will allow you to insert records into that view. Uh, it gets to be a little bit problematic, though, because with a view, you have to remember that there might be some other columns that are not visible to you. And so if I try to perform an insertion and those columns are expecting to have data, remember the data is ultimately going into a table, right? So for the columns that aren't present in the view, they are probably going to be set as null. And if they don't accept null values, then I cannot perform that insertion. Uh, but if they do accept null values, then a lot of times, yeah, you can insert stuff through the view. You just have to remember that if you do that, you're actually inserting data into the tables that the view is built off of, not the view itself. Again, the view does not contain any data. It's just a window into your tables, into your existing data. Um, they're very common, actually. You're going to see views sooner or later if you're ever working with databases. I don't think we're actually going to use them that much in this class, as a matter of fact. Um, but uh, they are certainly a very common tool that's used. So it, it, it will pop up eventually. Yep. Um, all right. What is SQL injection? I feel like we've talked about this a little bit before, but let's talk about it again. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I have a text box that I want people to give me some data, and instead of telling me uh, the name of their pet or whatever I'm asking them for, they type in some SQL code. And that gets sent off to the database, and then the database you know, tries to put that into the database or whatever it wants to do with it, and actually ends up executing whatever they typed into the, into the box. It's, a, it's an attack. It's a security risk. It's probably one of the most famous computer security risks um, out there um, in the world. Uh, how do we stop it? How do we prevent stuff like that from happening? How do we, how do we keep it from happening? It's a t topic that we've actually already kind of talked about. Yeah. Escaping, yeah, escaping. Same kind of thing that we would do for HTML. Um, we saw a few weeks back, or maybe it was just last week actually, where if I typed some HTML into the box, it would actually present that HTML as if it was part of the page, right? And make the page look strange. Um, and to fix that, we just escaped it. And the same thing will work for SQL injection. I can escape those characters and have them treated as uh, non-code characters. And um, that, will, that will do the trick. But you do have to remember to, to do that. It's a very important part of um, any application that works with a database, it's the responsibility of the developers to make sure that uh, they are aware of the, the dangers of SQL injection. Uh, the good news is it's a very well-known problem at this point, a well-studied problem. It's been around for a very long time, since the very early days of the internet, or maybe even earlier than that. 
Um, so it's not a new problem by any means, and there are lots and lots and lots of resources out there to help combat against uh, SQL injection these days. Um, yeah, so actually that was the that was the, all the list of topics that I have. Uh, I do want to switch over and do some actual SQL coding with the database today, but before I do that, uh, I'm happy to take a few minutes to talk about um, any additional concepts from today's prep work that you were hoping I would discuss, or if you want to go back and talk about stuff from Monday, because I know there was a lot of stuff on Monday as well, I'd be happy to talk about anything uh, database related um, at this point in time, if anybody's got questions about particular SQL concepts or things that they ran into as they were working on the prep work, I'd love to have a conversation. Okay. Is there any takers? No? Going once? Alrighty then. Well, uh, today is kind of a, a, a big day. It's a fun day, in my opinion, an exciting day because um, if you completed the prep work, you've got a database on your computer now. If you didn't get a chance to finish the prep work or you ran into some problems, um, that's okay. Flag me down after we get done with lecture and I will help help you out. Make sure that you get that stuff squared away or talk to your TA. We'll make sure that you get that stuff squared away um, so that you can uh, continue on. Uh, we are going to st still be using it um, next week when we go back to FlickList. We're going to need the database. Uh, when we go back to Flicklist next week. So it is important that you get it done today uh, if you didn't manage to do it before class. Um, so let us know if you need some help. Um, but what I'm going to do real quick is uh, walk you through how to set up a database in MAMP and uh, then we'll run some queries. We wrote some queries in class last time but we weren't actually able to check and see if they worked or not. Well today we'll actually be able to check and see if they work. We'll be able to see if those queries do what we thought they were going to do. I suspect we might find some mistakes <laughs> that we made, and that's okay. We'll take a look at that and see if we can fix them uh, as we go through today. So uh, I already had MAMP up and running, uh, but if you don't and you want to follow along, uh, go ahead and start up MAMP and make sure that it's up and running. You can see mine's already started up. It's already uh, running. I actually use MAMP a lot at work as well. I use MAMP all the time. Um, my version is probably a bit older than your version, so if it does look a little bit different than what you've got, um, that's why, although I don't expect that it's going to look that much different than what uh, you have on your computer. And so I want to get access to the database, and the way to do that is through PHP My Admin. And so in order to open that up, there's a button here that says Open Start Page. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It's going to take me to my browser. And I get this little welcome page from MAMP. I, I imagine yours looks at least somewhat similar to this. And up at the top, there's a menu item called Tools. If I click on that, I see there's an option called PHP My Admin. That's where we're going to go next. And so here it is. This is how we can interact with our database. On the left side here, you can actually see that there's a uh, I already have a, a bunch of database, a bunch of databases on my computer. Some of these are old launch code databases. Some of these are databases that I use in my classes on campus. Some of these are databases just for random apps that I've been working on. You probably don't see that many things over here. You might have a couple, um, but I wouldn't expect you to have a whole list like this, and that's okay. That's not a problem. What we're going to do right now is we're going to make another database, um, mostly just for practicing SQL. Uh, and then next week we'll make a database for our FlickList application, but we're not going to do that today. We'll, we'll save that for next week. Um, so today we're going to make a, a basic uh, database, and actually every database also needs a user account associated with it. So actually the way to create a database, there's multiple ways of creating a database, but the way that we are going to create a database is actually by creating a user account. Um, it's a good idea to have a separate database and therefore a separate user account for every application that you work on. Um, so I'm going to click this user accounts button up here at the top. You can actually see here's a list of my already existing users, right? I want to create a new user, so if I scroll down a little bit, there's a link down here to add a user account. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And it takes me to a menu that looks like this. And this is where I'm going to actually probably 
switch over to the instructions and make sure that I'm following them carefully because uh, this is an important part to follow properly. If you skip a step or you forget to do something, then you have to delete everything and start over again. It's not very easy to recover um, if you make a mistake. Um, so, you know, you can see that we have some options here. The first thing that I need to do is choose a username. And so I'm going to make the username um, Movie Buff, which is the name of the app, right, that we're working on today. Next week, we'll create a user for Flicklist. I think you can actually see that I already have a Flicklist database from the last time that I uh, went through this material. But today, we're working on an app called Movie Buff. The host name is actually the one that I need to double check. I want to make sure I get this right. I think I know what it is, but I don't want to guess. I want to be sure. I want to be absolutely sure. So the instructions, um, host name says set to local. So if I go back here, uh, you see this drop down says any host. That's not what we want. We want it to say local and it switches it over to local host, meaning this computer. The database that we want to create, we want to be located on our machine, right? And now we have to pick a password uh, for, th this is just a sample application, so the password you choose doesn't make a huge difference as long as you remember what it is. I'm going to make my password launch code, but you don't have to make yours launch code. You can see it actually thinks that's a bad password. It is, it's a bad password, but it's easy for me to remember. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make it launch code, all lowercase. I'm going to type it in again to verify. OK. And then I think we can skip these two. The last thing that we need to do, though, is down here, there's a box that says create database with the same name and grant all privileges. I'm going to check that box. So I'm not just creating a user account, I'm also creating a database that this user account can manipulate. I'm doing it all in one shot. So before I tell it to go, I'm actually going to just do one more check, make sure I didn't skip anything, make sure I didn't uh, type in any incorrect information. There's actually a picture on the uh, studio for today that shows the filled out form, right? You can see I've got the username, I've got local and local host, I've got my password typed in, and I've got the checkbox checked down here at the bottom. Double check yours real quick, make sure it looks okay. Again, if you, if you do make a mistake, if you forget something or you skip a step, um, it's not the end of the world, but you do have to delete everything and start over again. So it's a little bit of, a, of an annoying thing to, to have to deal with. All right. I'm going to go back to the page here. I am pretty satisfied that I have everything set up properly, so I'm going to go down to the very bottom. You notice all the other options that I skipped here. We're not even going to touch that stuff in this class. We're just sticking with the basics. There's a go button. So if you're confident you've got everything filled out properly, we're going to hit that button, and hopefully you get a successful message like this. And if I look over on the left, I should see that I now have a database called MovieBuff. Everything worked out the way it was supposed to. Should have got the green check mark with the success message, and you should see a database on the left side called Movie Buff now. But there are no tables. There's no data in the database. It's empty. It's brand new. We just created it. There's nothing in there. So if we want to do some stuff with it, uh, we need to get some data in there. And there's a couple ways we could do this. I could actually write SQL code to make some tables and insert some data. In fact, we did that last uh, Monday. And if we wanted to, we could actually plug those queries in. Um, but there's another way. We can actually import an existing set of data, uh, which is what we're going to do today. It's a little bit faster to get up and running uh, this way, uh, which is why we're going to do it. Um, and then once we have some data in there, we can kind of play around with it a little bit, write some queries to get some data back out. So uh, if I go back to the studio page, you can see under this import tables from SQL, there is a SQL file presented here called moviebuff.sql. So if I click on this, it downloaded it to my machine. I want to open this file up and take a look at it real quick, just because I can.
So this is the file that I just downloaded from the website. You don't have to do this part. You can, you can just look at, I'm not going to type any code in here. I'm just going to examine. I'm just going to look at it. Um, and so up at the top, I see some stuff, you know, that looks maybe kind of like SQL, but I got to be honest with you, you, even I am not exactly sure. Like, okay, set time zone. All right, cool, I guess. Like, whatever. Um, I'm not terribly concerned with that. Um, let's see if we can find something that looks a little bit more familiar to us. Here we go. This looks a little bit more familiar, right? Create table. Now, we haven't really talked about this a whole lot, if not exists, but it does exactly what it sounds like. If the table's not already there, make it. If the table is already there, well, then skip it. Don't worry about it, right? Um, so, you know, it's, it's doing some, it's doing a little bit of different stuff, but we've talked about We've talked about these kinds of things, setting column names and setting data types. This is what we did in class last uh, uh, Monday. And so I can scroll down and I see, oh, hey, wow, here's an insertion statement that's inserting a whole bunch of data in, into this table for me. That seems good, right? So we have a little bit of information to play around with. And if I scroll down, I see another table called movies. We talked about this table last time, right? You can see, um, so what you don't see I see director ID here, but I don't see anything hooking it back up to the director's table. This should be a foreign key, correct? Um, but I imagine we'll see something a little bit later on to help us out with that. Uh, here's a whole bunch of movie data. It's a lot, right? And then here we have some tables that we did not see from Monday. So viewers or users or whatever you want to think, people who want to watch movies, right? Here's a whole table for that and a whole bunch of made up people, or maybe these are real people, I don't know. I don't know these, Luigi Greco, that sounds like a made up name, but if the Luigi Greco is in the room, I'm sorry. Um, might be out there somewhere. And we have a viewings table as well. Actually, that's gonna play a very important role in today's studio. You're gonna be working with this table uh, in today's studio, as a matter of fact and I can see a whole bunch of data being inserted into the viewings table. And then here we go, if I come down here, oh, look at this. Alter table, add primary key, so mark the primary key column, right? It's also adding indexes. We haven't actually talked a whole lot about indexes, but I believe it was mentioned briefly on the prep work this week. What's an index? What's an index do for us? Faster sorting, faster lookup, faster searching. Yeah, that's the big one. Uh, it's The name comes from the like an index in a book. If you take a book, you flip to the back, you see the index, right? With all the lists of important terms and the pages that they appear on. It's the same concept. I'm going to make an index for a table that lists the terms that appear in a particular column and where they show up in the table so that if I'm looking for a particular term, I don't have to search every single row until I find it. I can just go directly to the spot where it is and look it up that much faster. So it's a performance thing. So it's making some indexes, right, as well um, for this. And, oh, setting some auto increment stuff, that's cool. Uh, adding some constraints, foreign key. There we go, there's our foreign key constraint. And I've got some more foreign keys for these other tables. And actually that's it, we're done. That's the whole file. So there's some stuff that I kind of glossed over that we haven't talked about a whole lot. And, and there's some stuff in here that's maybe still looks a little bit foreign to us, and that's okay. Uh, but for the most part, we kind of understand what's going on with this table or with this, with this uh, SQL code, right? Here's a little secret, or maybe it's not that much of a secret. I don't know. Uh, this code was not written by a human being. It was written by the computer. Um, somebody set up this database. Um, on their machine, some, some launch code employee. I don't know if their name's on it. Nope. Uh, it was probably Chris, if I had to guess. Uh, set up this database on his computer and then said, uh, I want to export this out. And so the computer wrote all the SQL code that it needed to to recreate the database on somebody else's machine. And that's what we're looking at right now. We can now make a copy of this database on our computers um, by importing this SQL file, which is exactly what we're going to do next. That is our next step, is to import this SQL file. So hopefully you downloaded this file. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our PHP MyAdmin, and up at the top, 
There should be an import tab. If you don't see it, you might have to look under more on the right side here. But there should be an import tab. Here it is. So I'm going to click on it. I want to import a file, so I'm going to click this Choose File button, and I'm going to navigate to where I downloaded that file. So here it is. It's in my Downloads folder. Surprise, surprise. I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here. Uh, let me double check the instructions real quick and just make sure that I don't need to check or uncheck any of these boxes. I want to make sure I get this right. Leave all the defaults. Okay, cool. Perfect. So, should we be able to find it? Or is it only on your computer? So, you'll have to download the file. The link to it's right here on the studio for today on the walkthrough. Okay. So, you'll have to download this file. And then, uh, wherever you downloaded it on your computer, mine was in my downloads folder, but you know, you can put it wherever you want. Wherever you download it, just go to the import tab on uh, PHP My Admin, tell it where that file got downloaded to. And we don't, it says we don't have to touch anything else on this screen, so I'm going to trust them. I'm going to trust that we don't need to mess with any of the other options on here. And I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to hit this Go button, and it should create those tables for me and insert that data into those tables for me if everything works the way that we expect. Uh-oh. Uh, no database selected. Whoops. Uh, I think I screwed up. <laughs> I think I skipped a step. I did skip a step. I skipped a very important step. I needed to click on the database before I did the import. Whoops. My bad. I don't know if it created those tables somewhere else. I guess I'm not really concerned about it. I'll fix that later if that happens. That was my bad. Um, I guess I skipped that part of the instructions. All right, let's try it again. I, I clicked on movie buff this time because that's where I want the data to go. Now I'm going to click on import again and I'm going to choose the file again and I think we're going to have better luck this time, I hope. Oh, that looks much better. All right. Whew. Sorry about that. You only do that a few times before you remember to not do it that way in the future. That's how most things work. And so I see all these green check marks, and actually I can see all the individual queries being executed one at a time right on the database and then actually what else you should notice is over here on the left side I now see that movie buff has these entries underneath it these are the, these are our tables these are the tables that are now in our database and if I want to I can actually examine those tables uh, for example I can open up this directors table by clicking the little plus sign next to it or I can even just click on the directors table directly and it will show me um, here's a list of the columns you can see all the columns as well as the data that is in this table. So here is my table right here, my director's table. Right? And so you can take a look at some of the other ones as well. Um, another neat thing that you can do actually with uh, PHP My Admin, this is a little tip that's not in the prep work uh, as far as I know. Um, Underneath my menu, in uh, um, so I clicked on Movie Buff. I clicked on the Movie Buff database, and if I go up to More, there's a little tab down here called Designer. And if I click the Designer tab, I actually see a visual representation of my database, as well as how the tables are connected with one another. So I actually can see the primary keys and the foreign keys. The primary keys are marked with a little yellow key. And the foreign keys, you can see, have a line drawn from one table to another table. So this is a great, great, great way to get a visual representation of the structure of your database. Um, the downside, you know, is we, we have four tables, so it's not so bad, but it's not unusual for a database to have a lot of tables, in which case this diagram gets very cluttered very quickly, so it can be a little tricky to untangle the spaghetti of your database in that particular case. Um, but you know, 
I don't have, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it, but there are ways to, um, you know, only display some of the tables in your database, the ones that you care about, for example, um, and dissect this diagram uh, in a little bit more detail. But for four tables, it's not that bad. It actually looks pretty nice. And so as you're writing queries for the studio today, I actually would recommend referring to this diagram to help you decide, right, which columns you need to satisfy the queries, which tables you need to satisfy the queries, and decide if you if you do need a join, right, which are the relationships that I can use, right, which are what are the keys that I can use to perform joins across these tables. Um, you can actually follow the lines to help you make those decisions. It's a very nice tool. Yeah, what's up? If we got errors, uh, for the designer? Yeah. Um, so I know actually that some versions of PHP my admin have trouble displaying the designer. So it wouldn't necessarily be your fault. You could try updating it. I don't know if you have the most recent version or not. Um, Oh, so, well, so I have a more tab because I zoom in because I like to make the text bigger for you all to see. If I zoom back out, it'll, you can see it's starting to add tabs as I zoom out, right? I don't have anything tabbed. I don't have anything tabbed. Oh, really? Did they, I wonder if they took the designer out or renamed it or? It's in there. I don't know. You have to click on movie buff first. So click on the movie buff database first, and then I would expect to see it. Yeah. Uh, if you're having an error, it's not a deal breaker. It, it really is not. You will be able to get by without it. It was just more of a, a nice to have, not a need to have kind of thing. So you will be able to get by without it. Um, I can even leave mine up here on the screen today if you guys want to reference it that way. But um, let's talk about queries. So that's kind of the last major piece here. Now that we have some data to play around with, uh, we can actually start writing some queries. In fact, we already did write some queries. So what I would like to spend the last chunk of my time today uh, doing is actually seeing if the queries that we wrote on Monday are as good as we thought they were when we wrote them. Um, Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Up here at the top, I see a query, query tab, so I'm going to click on that. Oh, actually, that's not what I meant to click. Sorry, I meant to click the SQL tab. My fault. And it pops up with a text editor, and I can, I can either type SQL queries into this box directly, or I can copy-paste them into this box, whatever I need to do. I actually still have all of the queries from Monday um, that we wrote as part of the studio. So now we can check them. Now we can check these. Um, I'm not going to check the uh, I'm not going to check the table creation or the insertions because those that's already been done when we did the import. But we can check all of the select statements. So list all the titles of the movies in the database. All right. This this was one of the more simple queries that we wrote. I know the more complicated ones are down at the end. We'll get to those eventually. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and copy paste that in, and I'm going to hit go. And if everything's working properly, here we go. I see a list of all the movies that are in the database. I don't know very many of these movies. Who who made this list? Do you guys? I know Amelie. I know Alien. I don't know. Oh, Seven Samurai. That's a good movie. And these older movies. Okay. Fair enough. I'm not going to judge. Um, so that query seems to have done exactly what we expected it to do, right? Let's try another one. Uh, we want to list all the titles in the movie in descending order of the year that they were released. So let's grab this query that we wrote. Uh, I need to go click the SQL tab again. Paste it in. I got you. All right. Oops. What are you doing to me here? Sorry. Click the database and then the SQL tab. Sorry. And if I go down, I can hit go. 
And so uh, this is um, supposedly, right, supposedly the list of movies and the order that they were released. But we actually can't see the date that they were released. Why not? Why can't I? Why don't I see the date that they were released? I didn't tell it to include that information, right? I didn't tell it to include that information, but I could. I could. It wouldn't even be that difficult of a modification, right? Just need to stick the year on here, and that will help me verify that it's doing what I expect it to be doing. So if I stick the year on here, ah, oh, there we go. So they're not all older movies. They're but there definitely are some older movies on this list. Woo. Going way back. Yeah. So that looks like it's actually working the way I would expect it to be. Um, cool, let's keep going. Let's try some more. I'm not going to do the insertions because I actually think this is already in there. I thought I saw it when I was looking through the data. So I'm not going to do the insertion, but... I can get the director ID for this guy. So where last equals Jeanet and first equals Jean-Pierre. So let's try that and see, see what happens. Click on the database, then click on SQL, and paste in my query. Yeah, what's up? Ah, thank you. Thanks for the tip. Life is easier, yeah. All right. Uh, showing row zero to zero. Whoops, something didn't go right. I'm not terribly surprised, right? Something did not go the way that we thought it was going to go. So let's figure it out. Let's see if we can figure out what the problem is. Um, you know, I'm trying to find the director ID for this director. So maybe I misspelled his name. That's probably my first guess is that I just didn't type his name in properly. Let's double check it. I can go to the directors table and I can actually see the contents. Here's the guy, Jean-Pierre Genet. I don't remember what I actually had in the box. J-E-U-N-E-T. Let's go back and see what I had before. Jean-Pierre. J-E-U-N-E-T. Yeah, it looks okay. Um, I mean, I think it was capitalized like I'm seeing here. So the other thing we could do, if we're not sure why why it's working this way, right? we can try and break it into pieces. Let's just do it on his last name first, see if that works. We could try his first name. Let's see. Still zero, where last equals Jeanne. Hmm. Did I swap first and last? That's certainly possible. Did I get his name backwards? Last is Jeanne. Okay. Hmm. This kind of stuff happens. This kind of stuff happens. I don't think so. If I zoom out, I can actually see a little more clearly. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not overly concerned yet with this. Let's try his first name since the last name's not working. I guess I'm a little skeptical that the first name will work too, but... Well, I mean, I don't think the semi... If the semicolon was the problem, it would have told us that the semicolon was the problem. What about a double quote instead of single? Double quote instead of single? It's certainly worth a try. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised. I still got zero rows. Yeah. I'm sorry? Oh, it, it is working. Here it is. I guess I just wasn't seeing it right. Sorry. My bad. Director ID is right here. It's right here. Why does it say showing rows zero to zero, one total? Okay, that's just a confusing statement. <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. Does that make sense to you? Am I the only one who's confused by that statement? Row zero, yeah. 
I, I'm a computer programmer. I should know stuff like this, I guess. <laughs> you would think. You would think. Uh, so our original query probably actually worked, and I was just blind this whole time. Yeah, there it is. It worked. My bad. Cool. That's all right. So his director ID is one. Perfect. We found it. Um, and so the next question actually told us uh, uh, that's an insert, so I'm going to skip it actually. So uh, I can list all columns for all records of the director's table um, in order of the director's country of origin. So, all right, let's check this one out and see see what's going on with this one. And then we'll get to some with the joins, which I know is what you are looking forward to. This looks good. F and then J, N, N, U. Looks good. I believe the ones that we have left involve joins. They do. So I want to get the country from directors, and then I'm joining the movies table where you can see that I'm using the director ID as the link between those two tables. We talked about that on Monday, how the director ID is a, has a primary key, foreign key relationship between those two tables, where the title of the movie that we're interested in is Amelie. So this should return the country of the director of Amelie, right? And we know that that should be France if we did this properly because it's this guy right here. So let's try it out. Let's run our query and see if we got this join working the way that we thought. Uh, zero, zero, 001 total. Okay. France, right there. There it is. We got it. So that worked, and I think we have one more join down here at the bottom. List all movies in the database along with each movie's director ordered by the director's last name. And so that's another join you can see. Um, I'm going to switch this to go last comma first, just because that'll make it a little easier to see the, the results, maybe. Oops. Uh, all right, last one. Here we go. Order by last. And I'm going to hit go here. Oops. Maybe. Please. Thank you. All right, here we go. And you can see the last name. It's in alphabetical order, as you would expect. So all of the movies, you can see that some directors are showing up multiple times, right? Because they've taught multiple movies. Or in other words, one director can direct many movies, right? Just like we ex would expect. It's a one-to-many relationship. So one director is directing many movies, in a few cases anyway. You can see that they appear to be in order by last name, right? So it looks like it worked, which is good. We got it. So it's nice. I, I really enjoy doing this because on Monday it feels a little unsatisfying to run those SQL queries and have no idea if they're actually going to do what we want them to do or not. So I, I like taking the time to make sure that, yes, they actually were correct. They were going to do what we expected them to do. Um, are there any questions about what we've done today? Any questions? I believe that's all that I had for you um, today. You do have a studio, and this studio is going to ask you to write some more SQL queries. So you um, obviously need to have MAMP set up first. If you had problems with that uh, or just didn't get time, you know, whoops, uh, let us know, and I'd be happy to come around and um, um, help you out if you need it. Um, but then down here at the bottom, there are some queries that we want you to write. Find out which countries, right? So and so, blah blah blah. Who are the French directors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so take take some time uh, to try and figure these out. There's fewer hints with these. I mean, I can give you some hints. You're going to need some joins. It's going to happen. You're going to need some joins. These are going to be a little trickier than the ones that we worked on on Monday. Um, but we will regroup at eight o'clock like we usually do and write some queries together to 
wrap up the day. So I'll see you all back here then. Thanks, everybody.